cloud delivering automation solutions, which uh, includes uh, CA client automation. So uh, I'm basically on as, as the marketing guy to give a, a plug for CA World. So I appreciate you letting me come on here for, for a couple of minutes, and I'll keep it pretty pretty short and sweet, hopefully. Uh, but if folks don't know, and if you haven't gotten, you know, uh, 110 emails already from us. <laughs> CA World is, is coming up. Uh, it's going to be April 21st through 24th uh, in Las Vegas. We'll be at the Mandalay Bay Resorts this go around. As you see from the title slide, our, our kind of theme this year is, is Go Big, IT with Impact. Of course, you always have to have a tagline, but I think now more than ever, hopefully folks on the phone are seeing that you know, IT is just getting closer and closer to the business, right? It's, it's being regarded more as a, as a, as a source of, of innovation and a, and a differentiator for, for business. And you're going to see a lot of uh, those kind of themes emerging at, um, at CA World this year. So I just want to go through. I've just got a couple of slides just to give you some, some details and some specifics about from a, um, from a you know, client automation perspective, what are things that hopefully will be of some interest to uh, everybody on the phone here. Uh, but again, just recap, uh, we have a, a pretty exciting keynote, at least I'm excited about it, hopefully some of the folks on the phone will be, but Richard Branson, I guess it's Sir Richard Branson, to be correct, is um, going to be given, delivering the keynote at CA World this year. If you've ever heard his story or speak, he's um, a pretty entertaining uh, visionary, so that should be that should be fun. Um and I'm sure a lot of folks on the phone are, you know, old CA World uh, experts, so some of this might be a little repetitive. But the one thing that I do want to point out um, is that we still got kind of early bird registration going on through February 1st. And the other that uh, everybody on the phone here can take advantage of is you do get a, a pretty significant discount of $200 for being um, a member of, of one of our global user communities. Um, and you can apply, or that gets applied when you go on to uh, ca.com forward slash ca world and, and hit the registration link. So again, I, 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 this is probably preaching to the choir some of this, but I mean, you know, what are what are sort of the top reasons why people do attend ca world? Um, and I think this uh, does a pretty good job of capturing that. One, it's just an opportunity to get some some great rich content. You know, we'll have. Uh, over 500 sessions and presentations across uh, about nine different focus areas. Um, you'll find that all of the client automation related content and sessions and labs, et cetera, are under our track. And our track is called um, Agile Cloud Delivery and Automation Solutions. So look for that track if you're going online, especially if you're going online to the session catalog and, and looking for sessions. Um, I think the big and probably the most important one is just the, the networking opportunities, right? It's just a it's a great opportunity to to, uh, to kind of share best practices with your peers and learn from others, as well as have uh, the best and the brightest from CA there available. You know, our top top architects, developers, product managers, etc., uh, to have discussions with them. And then, of course, we have lots of uh, kind of personal and professional development opportunities. Um, including, you know, uh, education session, training sessions, hands-on labs, and again, access to our uh, kind of our technical experts to to hopefully answer any of those tough, thorny questions you may have about some of our solutions. Um, again, I just wanted to, to to highlight here. This is just kind of help you navigate if you're going through CA World and trying to understand how all the sessions are organized. We're going to have these these pretty much map to um, the way we go to market with our solutions uh, currently. So we have sort of nine focus areas. Um, like I mentioned, the, 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 the client automation related content sessions are going to be in that top one under this sort of Accelerate IT um, banner. And uh, again, it's going to be around the Accelerate service delivery with Agile Cloud Automation Solutions is uh, the track where you'll find um, most of the, uh, the the client automation related content, but you can see here, I mean, all of the different focus areas. And when you go on to CA World, you'll be able to f the CA World website. You'll be able to find a little bit more detail about each of these focus areas and tracks and, and the content that's going to be contained within. 
So to get to the, uh, the the meat of it, which probably most of the folks on the phone are most interested in, from a from a um, CA client automation perspective, uh, we've got uh, uh, several sessions, lab, exhibit center, campground, all those kinds of great opportunities to to learn more and share with your peers. Um, at the top here are kind of the dedicated client automation um, sessions we have lined up so far. Uh, I'm imagining that this slide deck will hopefully get passed around after our call, but these are actually, these are all hyperlinked directly to the CA World session catalog. So if you click on one of these, it'll go right to it. You can read the, um, the session description to get more detail. But we'll have a, um, a pretty good detailed client automation strategy and roadmap session, which I believe my colleague, Laurel Gentry, who's on the line, will be uh, delivering that. Um, as well as several uh, customer and partner-led sessions. And you can see here, I won't read these off to you, but some sessions from FedEx, Olympus, um, et cetera. We will have a, a hands-on client automation um, lab at, uh, at CA World, and I'll let Laurel or others kind of speak to you if anybody has questions, a little bit more detail what's going to be covered there. Um, We'll have our sort of standard exhibit center area, and there'll be sort of two dedicated demo stations um, for client automation, you know, staffed by some of our best sort of technical experts on the solution to, um, you know, show you the latest and greatest, answer any questions you have, et cetera. Uh, we'll also have the, the campground area, which are also um, usually staffed by, staffed by some of our best, you know, technical minds from a client automation perspective, and they'll be there just available to sit down with you, you know, talk about your challenges or any issues you have and try to work through those. Um, and then I, I won't steal thunder here because this is the point of this session today, but understanding is that there will also be a, an on-site, you know, face, face meeting of, of the user community um, at the world. So that's uh, pretty much what I just wanted to cover. I mean, it's just uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great CA world. Um, uh, you know, hopefully we'll get uh, some of the folks here on the line to attend. Lots of great sessions and informations and chances to share with one another. If for more information about it, these are some direct links as well. Um, most importantly, just go to the ca.com forward slash CA world where you can do your registration, you can, um, you know, start signing up for the sessions that interest you, et cetera. Um, we still have a couple of, uh, I think probably three or four session slots we're still trying to fill. So if you are interested in uh, potentially presenting your story of how you're using CA client automation solutions, we'd love to have that in combination with, um, you know, other CA solutions you may be using, especially if you're using any of our other sort of data center automation tools. Um, so if you have interest in that, um, feel free to ping me. Um, I did include my email on here, but I'll, I'll send it to, hopefully Mary can distribute it afterwards if there's somebody that is interested in, in potentially presenting at CA World and we can discuss it. Um, there's an opportunity to sign up for a, a CA World newsletter. And then, of course, you can kind of follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn and all the various social media outlets. So that's all I had to cover, and I appreciate you guys letting me come on for a few minutes. And now I'll shut up and let you guys get to the fun stuff. So, uh, Dorothy, would you like to speak about the CA World uh, free pass? We don't have a slide for that today. Okay, all right. Thank you. Um, good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for joining today. We're really excited about CA World, but you also have an opportunity to attend CA World, the admission fee paid, by entering our contest, and the contest is very simple. We're looking for presenters for our user community, just like today. The topic that you could actually present could be anything that you've used in your environment, how maybe you installed it, how maybe you're using uh, the client management suite to manage some of the problems or issues in your environment. You could also maybe use it to show new leading edges that you're using in your environment. Um, by submitting this, we'll select one person out of this, but we'll also call on you to present throughout the year, those who do submit, and we'll select one person to attend CA World free. Of course, you have to cover your own travel expenses, etc. but if you submit those ideas, we can actually 
you can actually win your way, free admission, to CA World. So we look forward to all of you submitting your ideas for presentations, and we look very much forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to hand it back over to Mary. Thanks, Mary. Thanks, Dorothy. And uh, where do they post their um, their topic submissions on the uh, post? There's a post on the message boards, I believe, that they can reply to. Yes, there is. There's a place if you go on to the message boards um, at the client management community. You'll see the post there, and you can simply post your ideas for presentations there. Okay. I look very much forward to everybody participating. Thank you. Thanks, Dorothy. Yeah, so what you'll do is make sure you're logged in so you can see the reply link in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, free pass post and just submit your topic uh, there. Uh, thank you, Dorothy. Okay, so um, I'm going to give a little talk. My name is Mary Greening, and I'm the community manager from CA for uh, the ITCM community, and I'm going to give a little talk today about ideation. Um, ideation is uh, a crowdsourcing uh phenomenon, as you might say, for um, crowdsourcing product ideas. Uh, it's modeled after the award-winning Dell Idea Storm, um, and users can submit ideas, and the community members can vote up the, the ideas up or down. Um, you can also comment on the ideas that others have submitted. So say somebody su su submits an idea that you really like, uh, but you want to add to it or um, just you know comment on it, you can do that. Um, and then product teams, uh, the product team for this product will uh, status the ideas monthly. So uh, where do you find it? What you can do is you can go to um, the, the community, make sure you're logged in, and you'll see there on the, uh, the upper navigation there's an ideas link. I've highlighted it in yellow on this slide. Also, I'll also show you giving a live demonstration. Uh, you can, all, you can search for the idea that to see if it's already existing, so that's the best practice. Search for it first um, and make sure that somebody else hasn't already submitted it. And if they have, just go ahead and click Promote, um, and you can vote it up. Um, so then you can, if you, if you can't find your idea already by using search, uh, you can post the idea using uh, the navigation that we went over before. Or if you look at the bottom of this slide in the right-hand corner, I've highlighted a little light bulb. Um, you can click on a light bulb within a thread, and it will capture the information from the thread. So there's two ways to post an idea. Um, and, I'll, again, I'll show you that live. I'm just going through the slides very quickly. Uh, make sure you have a title. Make sure it's got a lot of keywords so that others can search on it. And um, make sure that you put it, uh, as much information as possible for the product manager and others to see in the body of the idea. And then um, you can choose a category. Um, in this case, we'll only I think there's only two, one category um, for the product. So just click on the category and um, so click Submit, and your idea is good to go. Now I'm going to go to the live system. Um, let me know, uh, Dorothy, if you could let me know when this uh, hang on. this goes live. I can see the slide on the screen, Mary. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go live with the um, community. Okay, not up yet. Mary, if this comes up, one thing I wanted to uh, let everyone know is that um, over the course of the next year, um, we are going to be transitioning the old DAR or enhancement request process to the ideation on the user communities. Um, that is going to be your path into um, the enhancement request system. Uh, this gives a lot of benefits. You'll be able to track it. You'll know where it's at. Other people can uh, weigh in and say, yes, uh, you know, that is higher priority for me than these other enhancement requests. So it's really getting the community involved in future enhancements that we put into the product. Thank you. So, can, I, can everybody see the community on their screen? Yes, we can now. Okay, so here we are. We're at the um, CA Client Management community, and there's the ideas link right there. And all you do is you want to submit an idea, go here. It'll take you to a different system. 
um, completely. It's not within the same platform, uh, so it takes a moment to make it. And uh, here's where you can search. Uh, there are a couple ca categories actually in here. Um, you can see them in the bottom left. Um, you can filter through these categories. There's a roadmap up here in the upper right. It's the most recent roadmap. And um, here's where you can scroll through the, the various uh, requests and promote or demote them. Uh, here's where you can comment down here. And um, see this little new new uh, tag here. This is where Laurel will go in and she will go through the um, the various uh, ideas and she can change the status. So the different statuses are here, um, currently planned, delivered, new, not planned, and under review. And so that way you can uh, find out what the status of your idea is. And the way to get back here is uh, hitting the back button will not work, so you've just got to click that back to communities link. And um, the, don't forget that the alternate way to get to uh, the ideas is through the little light bulb in the various uh, posts in the message board. Again, you must be logged in. Just hit that light bulb, and uh, it will capture the keywords and actually give you some ideas of what um, other uh, ideas have been posted with the keywords that are in the post. So um, with that, I think if there's any questions, Holly, if you could open the lines up for questions, or you can uh, post a question in the Q&A in the upper part of the live meeting console, and uh, Laurel and I will be happy to answer questions about um, this, fe this new feature request method. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question, press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 for questions. And Mary, I just wanted to comment that um, I'm really excited about switching over to uh, the ideation um, on the community site rather than the old uh, enhancement request process where you open up an issue, those get reviewed once a month, um, and the, the comments we've always gotten back from, from clients who submit enhancement requests is that they seem to disappear into a black hole. I do track all of them, uh, and there is quite a long list because the product has been around for a number of years. This will give visibility into all submitted enhancement requests, uh, and you'll be able to, to see and track um, those things that, that you would like to see put into the product. So I, I think it's a great way forward um, to, to track these. And at this time, there are no questions over the phone lines. Okay. Well, Laurel, you're up next. All right, I will um, just bring up my presentation um, quickly. Um, my name is Laurel Gentry. I'm the product manager for those of you who don't know me. Uh, and I want to apologize in advance because I'm coming down with a bit of a cold and a cough. So uh, I, hopefully I won't be um, going into a coughing fit at any time during this presentation. But if I do go on to mute, everything will be okay. I'll be back. Um, so today I just wanted to go over um, some of the things that we've delivered in the last year. Um, 12.5 SP1 uh, went GA in April 2012, and um, a feature pack that we delivered on top of SP1 went GA in September. Um, and just want everyone on the, the community and on this call to be aware that, um, you know, you need to start looking at these new releases. Um, we are going to be end of servicing um, the R12 and R12 SP1 release. So we would encourage you, if you are still on those releases, to get a migration plan, an upgrade plan in place, and go to, you know, preferably the, the feature pack one, the, the very latest release that we have. So I wanted everyone to be aware of what features we've added um, <clears throat> during this time frame over the, over the last year. So and SP1 was released in April, and we had um, a, a strategy of e extending more into the virtualized desktop world. Um, everyone seems to have at least proof of concepts going um, with desktop virtualization um, infrastructures. And one thing that we were hearing um, specifically around VMware, uh, and the same issue does occur in Citrix and desktop also, is that the people that were doing the proof of concepts were not able to realize the return on investment that, that VDI, 
uh, offers or was uh, touting to offer, um, simply because when you have a large uh, install base, your users are installing their own software. They're, they're installing stuff. They're either ordering it um, um, from the, the software delivery catalog or uh, downloading it from your corporate site. Um, so they're not all on the image, and they're not necessarily all controlled um, uh, it through, you know, that image management process. Well, what was happening um, with VDI is they would have this golden template um, that would propagate down when users logged on through the linked clones, and then users would, you know, um, install software that wasn't on that image. And any time that that virtual um, gold master was refreshed, which with Windows systems is going to be every patch Tuesday most likely, those users would lose their um, custom installed software. Um, which was bringing down the system um, and uh, lowering the satisfaction of their end users with this new computing paradigm. Um, so people were having to revert back to giving them their their own full virtual machine, um, which then, of course, drove up the storage costs in the data center exponentially. So what we did was went in and added um, the ability to manage your virtual machines in the exact same way you manage physical machines, with your policies, um, your groups, your queries, um, all of those things that are supported for physical desktops. You can manage your virtual desktops um, in the same way, um, whether they are static virtual machines or the dynamically linked clones. The next thing we did was address that problem of installing the software um, after a refresh. So that we added a number of ways to do it, and we have an excellent uh, tech brief out there on the different options you have. But probably the best option, which does not take any uh, network time at all, is install as many applications as possible on that golden image, and then just enable the user's access through um, Active Directory. Another option is to um, just put the, put the application on, um, but then only deliver the access point um, to the, the end user at the time of refresh. So you're only sending out a very small software delivery package with the start menu and the, and the desktop icon or whatever entry point you want that user to have. So Service Tech One added this level of support for um, VMware View. Another thing that we added, um, and this actually came out as a patch at the end of uh, 2011, but it was uh, rolled up into the Service Pack 1 release, was an automated process for Windows migration. Um, this uses all of the functionality that has existed forever in um, client automation and IT client manager and put a run book process around it. Um, so, you know, previously you were able to do all of these things to fully automate a Windows migration, and we had, a, you know, lots and lots of clients using our product to do that. This just kind of um, standardizes it for you and also gives you access to the um, process automation content that we uh, created around that. So what you're able to do is run an assessment on a target group to see if the, the hardware itself is, um, is physically able to handle the, the Windows 7 um, and upcoming Windows 8 uh, har uh, operating system. So that will create a number of different groups, OS not ready, um, OS ready, or, you know, Windows 7 or Windows 8 is already installed. And then you can take a number of actions on those groups. If they're not ready, you can run reports and queries to determine, you know, why isn't it ready? Is it something that I can, you know, easily upgrade, or is this machine going to need to be replaced? And, and do your migration planning um, with some, some knowledge and some insight into what you have out there. For those that uh, fall into the Windows 7 Ready group, um, you're able to initiate your um, your deployment. Um, and essentially what uh, the, the automated process does is um, wipes and reloads the machine with the new operating system, calls software to d delivery to deliver any additional applications that are not on that image, um, and then it uh, lays back down your desktop settings and data um, using Desktop Migration Manager. 
Um, another thing that we did um, in Service Pack 1 was extended the um, the data elements that were available for Boxy reporting, the business intelligence reporting. Um, so, and, and we continue um, in Future Pack 1 to uh, make all of our database elements available. So if you have not uh, downloaded and installed and started using business intelligence reporting, I would encourage you to do so. Um, it, it has a web-based user interface. You can predefine reports, um, ad hoc reporting, graphing. You can publish them. You know, if you have a, a a report that you need to give to upper management on a regular basis, you can publish that out to a website or, or to a link. It's really a, a clever way to do reporting. I did want to uh, let everyone know that uh, we are still supporting the the legacy uh, DSM reports. We're not deprecating those. We know that um, a lot of clients have customized those, and they're not going away. Um, going forward, however, for new features that we add, they will be added into business intelligence reporting and not the DSM Explorer. So I would encourage you, um, when you do upgrade to Service Pack 1 and or Feature Pack 1, to start exploring the, the business intelligence reporting. Um, there were another, uh, um, a number of other enhancements that we put in Service Pack 1. Um, bare metal installation of VMware ESX. Um, we needed to do that in order to fully support um, the uh, VDI enhancements that we put in for VMware View. Um, we enhanced some patch manager reports and um, content authentication, added Oracle 11G support and cluster support for SQL Server 2008, and a couple of other things there that we added in Service Pack 1. Um, now, Feature Pack 1 um, is just a, a, a set of features that we wanted to get out into the install base without having to wait for the next dot release, um, get them out um, and, and get them being used. Um, we had a number of marquee features, um, enhanced software detection through IntelliSIGs, uh, and I'll go over um, at a fairly high level what IntelliSIGs are. I did want to mention that we do have a hands-on lab uh, planned for CA World to teach you about IntelliSIGs and also how to create and use your own for enhanced discovery and inventory. We added Citrix Zen Desktop um, for our virtual desktop infrastructure support. Um, we added some green IT remediation that is exposed through Eco Desktop and enhanced boxy reporting. Um, so the first thing I wanted to talk about um, was IntelliSIGs. So currently the product, um, or previous to this release, um, the product had two ways to do uh, discovery and inventory. And that was through heuristics, um, looking at the add and remove programs database, um, and our CA published content signatures. Um, so we wanted to add a, a third method um, that was a little more flexible. So we added a script-based IntelliSIG scanning capability. Um, and the clever thing about IntelliSIGs is that with one IntelliSIG, you can discover um, any number of versions of that software, whereas with the CA published content signatures, you need a signature for each version, each dot release, and each patch to be able to get down to that level. And with a single IntelliSIGs, <clears throat> Um, say for WebSphere, you can detect all of the, the um, versions, the dot versions, the patches, and it will also detect any patches or dot versions that come out in the future. So it really increases um, your capability to publish um, one IntelliSIG and uh, not have to worry about that again unless the manufacturer changes the way the product is installed um, for the architecture. Um, you can export the IntelliSIG that we um, provide, and, and they are provided in the same way that the signatures are through the content update service. Um, they're downloaded whenever we publish a new one along with your signatures. They go in a file and then are used on the next scan. Um, you can export those um, to use them as a template to create your own IntelliSIGs and, and signatures, um, whether that is because you have um, a piece of homegrown software that you need to do discovery and inventory on, whether it's because we, um, it, you know, it's a, it's a one-off piece of uh, software 
that um, the CA content team has determined doesn't have benefit for our larger install base, um, so you can create these custom install settings. And uh, this is just um, some screenshots um, of the IntelliSig capabilities. Um, the first release here, we focused on um, extending uh, our content specifically in IntelliSig for Unix applications. Now, in the meantime, since this came out uh, in uh, September, we have taken all of these Unix-based applications and also created Windows um, IntelliSigs to detect these applications on Windows systems. So we will continue to expand our IntelliSig content as time goes on. The next thing we added um, in Feature Pack 1 was uh, Citrix Zen Desktop. So all of the things that we were doing for VMware um, virtual desktops, we do for Citrix. Um, discovery and inventory of both the host and the guests um, and any virtual machine you have out there. The inventory maintains the relationship that exists between that host and guest. So you know that if you know the, the host, um, you can tell exactly what guests are uh, residing on that host, um, and we interface with the machine creation service and the provisioning services supported. And um, it, it, we uh, allow the management of your uh, virtual systems in the, in the same way that we do your physical si systems. Um, another thing that we added, and, and this was added actually back in 12.5, uh, so um, quite a while back we added the ability to do remote um, virtual inventory or agentless platform inventory. The way this works is that you set up um, an agent on a Windows machine, and that agent can put a probe out and um, get inventory, collect your inventory of your hypervisors. Um, without actually having to have an agent on those. So in Feature Pack 1, we extended the remote virtual inventory um, to uh, support ESX server, um, which of course we had to do um, to support the, the virtual um, desktop initiative. Um, we also added um, virtual inventory for Sun Dynamic systems. Um, and as time goes on, we will continue to um, expand our remote virtual inventory. Um, one of the reasons we had to do that is on a lot of these hypervisors, you're not supposed to install anything actually on the hypervisor system itself. And in some cases, depending upon the manufacturer, that can um, mess, mess around with your supported um, configuration. You might not be able to get support if you start installing agents and things on those hypervisors. Um, so we also, and I've already said we added it for ESX, um, vCenter, Citrix Zen Server, and Microsoft Hyper-V. Um, in parentheses here, we have, it, it is a Windows RVI agent only, which means you have to install this agent on a Windows machine out there somewhere so that it can go and, and collect these inventory on all of these other different platforms. We also added a virtual wake on LAN. Um, so through that RVI agent, the remote virtual inventory agent, you're able to send a command to wake up a guest um, on any host machine. We also extended OSIM platform support. Um, we needed to add the ability to do bare metal provisioning of the Zen servers um, to host your uh, Citrix Zen desktop uh, environment. And we also did um, a, an enhancement for OSIM to be able to give you notification on the status of your OS installation. Um, you know, previously we weren't able to give you a status on that OS installation just to pass or fail because we, know, we didn't have our agent on it. So now we're able to give you a status of ongoing OS installations even prior to um, getting that operating system and the image laid down with our software delivery agent on it. Um, back in 12.5, we added some green IT um, reporting um, through our asset intelligence intelligence application, and we've extended that in the feature pack one to uh, provide some active green IT remediation. 
Now, green IT remediation is part of Eco Desktop. You do need to have an Eco Desktop license to be able to take advantage of this functionality. Um, but it does allow you to go in, configure policies that will centrally manage and control your power settings. You can um, send custom messages to users before you initiate a system shutdown, um, send it off to hibernate or sleep. Um, you're able to, you know, um, configure those messages to meet any business needs you may have, allowing them to cancel any sort of shutdown um, or defer it a number of times before it just, um, it, it will automatically shut down. So it gives you some fine, um, fine level control of, of your power settings um, across your install base. Um, you can also configure, um, you know, if, if somebody changes their power settings, um, you know, the next time it does an inventory, it will automatically go out and reset those. So, again, giving you more control over what is happening out there um, in your install base. And with the, the feature pack one, um, all of the data um, elements in the database are now report, uh, available for reporting through Boxy. So we opened up the entire database. Um, you can do ad hoc reporting on any data elements out there. Um, so again, I would encourage you, if you haven't looked at Boxy yet, to go ahead and go out there and, and take a look at, at what's going on with the Boxy reporting. Another great thing about Boxy um, is that uh, a lot of the other CA products, if they're not already using it, it's in an upcoming release. And Boxy allows um, you to do cross-product reporting so you can integrate your client automation data um, with your service desk data, um, with your ITAM data, um, so you can do a, a lot of very advanced uh, reporting and data mining. Um, we have added some education classes. These are out there and available. Uh, so if you want some more um, detail on what we've covered today, I would encourage you to go out and take a look at these education courses that are available through the support site. And then I just wanted to um, go over what some of the analysts are saying right now. Um, you know, over the last year, we, we changed our strategy a bit from, you know, making uh, large dot releases or, or new releases um, to delivering in the service stream as patches and then rolling those up into service packs or feature packs to get the functionality out there um, and in use by our install base as soon as possible. And um, it, several of the analysts have recognized recognize that. Um, I don't have the, the last Gartner Magic Quadrant in here. That came out um, uh, uh, just over a year ago. Now, we were down in the Magic Quadrant um, in, the, in the lower um, left-hand corner. Um, CA has always had a very interesting relationship with Gartner. But they did recognize that we were one of the only client management products in the market that does both physical and virtual machine management as well as virtual application management, which we've done for some time. Um, the uh, EMA, um, Client Lifecycle Management Radar Report, puts us as a, in the leader um, area, and they also cite um, you know, our ability to, to meet the, the needs of this market. And then the Forrester Wave, um, which came out last spring, um, puts us as a leader along with Symantec. Um, we received the highest scores in our overall strategy and our architecture, um, where we are able to scale um, to very, very large um, uh, infrastructures. Um, and we tied for highest score with um, uh, planned product enhancements, um, sustainable differentiation and value, um, especially around our virtualization support, um, key technology partners and services. Uh, at this point, I would like to open it up for questions and just mention that um, at CA World, I will be doing a roadmap presentation, so going over what our strategy uh, and our roadmap looks like for the coming um, 12 to 18 months. So, Holly, if we could open it up for questions at this point, that would be great. Um, we also wanted to um, go over some of the, have Brian do a presentation on live chat through the support. Ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question over the phone lines, press star 1 on your telephone keypad. Again, that's star 1 for questions.
and currently no questions over the phone lines. All right. Um, Brian, Laurel, I hope Laurel, there are several uh, messages up in the queue. Okay. All right. Um, let me take a look. All right. Um, the first question um, comes from Derek, and it's um, for Desktop Migration Manager. After the machine has been scanned for your data and settings and then a Windows um, 7 image drop down, does the user who will be using the machine need to log in before the tool can bring the files and settings back down? No, the user doesn't need to log on. That can all be automated um, uh, through, through the process that we create and through the configuration of your desktop migration manager process that you set up. Um, the next question um, is from Vincent and um, wants to know if there are any plans to evolve the client automation into the mobile device management for um, the iOS and Android operating systems. And uh, it, that's an excellent question. Um, we do not currently have plans to add that functionality to um, client automation. CA is evolving its um, overall mobile management strategy because it goes much beyond just managing those devices and managing those o OSs. Um, you know, you need to get into App Store management, managing your application access and performance. Um, you need to understand your data security um, and, and your overall security of those mobile devices to prevent data leaks. Um, so CEA, I would expect in the next two to three months, we'll um, have some announcements around what our strategies are in the mobile device area. And I would expect, while we're not adding it directly to IT Client Manager or Client Automation, I would expect there to be some integrations between the two um, because uh, as technology evolves, I think we're going to see m many, many more mobile devices, bring your own devices, you know, the way you manage your desktops um, are are going to change. So I, I do see that we would probably have some integration um, along um, with whatever mobile device strategy um, CA chooses overall. The next question is from Daniel. Um, when is a new master image or package to patch a master image for Feature Pack 1? And also, what is the status of putting the existing patches for SP1 to be included in a patch in SP1? We are currently in the process of uh, creating a cumulative um, that would wrap um, both Service Pack 1 and Feature Pack 1 into one image. Right now, we're looking at um, mid-spring, so April, May timeframe to have that available. And as I'm answering these, if anyone has further questions or, or wants to probe a little bit deeper, um, just let me know. Windows 8 support, how soon? This question comes from Tom. Um, Windows 8 support for the agent, um, which is uh, discovery and inventory, software delivery, and remote control, should be out by the end of this month within the next couple of weeks. Um, that is also for Windows Server 2012. We will have agent support. Um, OSIM support is going to be later this year um, when we get that out, and that will be um, released as a patch. We're not going to make you wait for our next release for that, um, at least at this point. So stay tuned for that, and, uh, you know, watch the support site. We'll be uh, releasing Windows 8 soon. Um, we will be um, making a, a copy of this presentation available um, on the – Mary will make it available along with the recording, a recording of the webcast. The next question um, was, uh, when is the next service pack um, scheduled to be released? Um, so we do have a cumulative coming out um, in the spring, um, and that will be followed by a release later uh, this year, and that will be our 12.6 release. Um, this question is from Chris, um, and the question is, it seems the terms Zen Server and Zen Desktop are being used interchangeably, um, but the features I've seen you mention are specific to Zen Server. Are there features specific to Zen Desktop? Um, Zen Server and Zen Desktop, um, if I uh, was confusing in, in my use of those, I apologize. Um, the way we support Zen Server is you're able to do bare metal provisioning for Zen Server um, and manage it just like any other server. And that Zen Server hosts your Zen desktops, uh, virtual machines, or, um, or, or your linked clones. 
Um, so as far as Zen Desktop, uh, when you deploy your Zen Desktop infrastructure, we can do discovery and inventory of the hosts and the guests and any virtual machines you have out there. Um, you can do software delivery, patch management, if you need to push out emergency patches either to your golden image or to all of your linked clones if you don't want to um, refresh that image yet. Um, you can do everything you can do to a physical desktop to a virtual desktop. Um, the next question is, do I need to purchase a license to download and install Boxy? You do not need to have a separate license. Um, if you have ITCM 12.5, um, you can download um, and use Boxy. Now, those clients that um, still may be out there with the, the Unicenter licenses for asset management, software delivery, and remote control, you would need to upgrade um, your licensing to ITCM or client automation to, uh, to be able to download Boxy. Um, one thing that um, I did want to point out on the Windows 8 support, um, the agent uh, support that we are releasing uh, by the end of the month, you need to be on um, R12.5 service pack and also have the feature pack 1 um, installed. Um, that agent is dependent upon that infrastructure. Um, the next question um, was, what about support for Zen Desktop using VMware? Um, you are able to, I believe you are able to, and, and perhaps one of the um, one of the uh, TSO or support guys for client automation that may be on the phone might be able to clarify this further, but I do believe you can um, deploy Zen Desktop machines to VMware servers. I don't think that there's any limitation about doing that. And for Server 2012, Windows Server 2012, is that going to be a patch as well? Yes, the agent support will be released as a patch. Again, that's on top of um, Service Pack 1 and the Feature Pack, uh, and that will be a patch that will be available very shortly. Were there any other questions before we turn it over to, um, to get a, a, a demonstration of the live chat? and get uh, some information to you about that. No questions over the phone lines. All right. Um, there is one more question that has come in um, online. Um, and then the question is, we're using the R12 version, um, desktop and server management currently. If we need to upgrade it to 12.5, do we need to purchase a separate license for that? Um, it, I need some clarification on what you're currently licensed for. You're using R12. Are you still licensed for the Unicenter um, agents, or are you licensed for ITCM? Um, and it, it, regardless, if you if you are licensed for the older agents um, or the older licensing scheme where you purchase licenses for asset management, software delivery, and remote control, you still have the rights to upgrade to 12.5 um, without um, changing your licensing. Are there any other questions? And still no questions over the phone lines. All right. Um, Mary, I think you wanted um, to have Brian do a, a, a little information about the live chat. Brian? Yes. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. Good e uh, afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Brian Petrovsky. I'm a senior support engineer with IT client automation, and um, we've we've had the live chat feature available now um, uh, for ten months, and we're averaging uh, about five to ten new chats per week. We uh, we have availability from uh, five days a week, 24 hours a day, and we. Uh, get a lot of good questions about um, test fixes, tech docs, uh, compatibility, uh, errors receiving, and um, if it does turn out, 
you know, that it's the question is more of a, an issue than uh, our engineers will um, open up an issue for the technician, uh, for the customer, and um, either work with them going forward or another engineer will continue working with them. Um, we, uh, we do have the ability to uh, double or triple the amount of incoming chats we're getting. So um, please uh, give it a try. If you have a quick question about uh, is a tech doc available, test fixes, uh, compatibility of the versions you're using, if you're getting a certain error message, um, it's not to check statuses of ongoing issues or uh, if you have a system down emergency, that's not what chat's for, then you really need to open up an issue. But it, it is, you know, for uh, something that's a quick question that doesn't, uh, you know, need uh, to be an issue. Um, we have, uh, like I said, we have engineers available uh, on the different time zones um, in India, Europe, uh, U.S., and um, we do go 24 hours uh, and five days a week. And I'm trying to think. Any, oh, to uh, to access uh, live chat, if you haven't uh, tried it yet, uh, when you go to open an issue on support.ca.com um, and you select uh, open a new uh, issue, when, once you select one of the client automation products or IT client uh, management, uh, if you select the individual components, software delivery, asset management, remote control, asset intelligence, uh, desktop migration manager, patch management, all those uh, will come up with an option for uh, once you are going to uh, select to open the issue, there will be a uh, pop-up banner above that uh, that will say, would you like to speak with a, a, a live uh, operator? And uh, you just click on that link and enter your question and uh, some basic information about your uh, environment. And um, one of our operators that are also uh, engineers will um, be happy to help you. And if it isn't something they can answer in a, in a quick uh, fashion, they will, um, or if it needs more research, they need to get logs, then um, They'll open up a uh, ticket for you at that time. Um, all the chat transcripts. Once you you have the you could have it uh, emailed to you at the end of the at the end of the chat, and uh, so you can always have a record on that. And if you go back and uh, want to see your notes, and um, that's basically it. Um, uh, we're looking forward to uh, reaching our first year in uh, March. And um, if you have any questions on that, I am on the community board, or um, you could uh, email me directory, directly at uh, petbr05 at ca.com if you come across any problems or uh, issues uh, when using the uh, live chat feature. Thanks, Brian. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending.